we're going to watch a little video uh, to learn about Latin Life Denver and the important gap that they're filling here in Denver. We're so lucky to have them partnering tonight and so lucky to have them in our community. My name is Tony Shawcross. Thank you very much. So I have a guest. I we I we just you know uh, everybody. This is Joe. Hey, yeah, thank you, uh, Joe. We just saw we saw a lot of dancing, but that's not just Latin Life Denver. I want to know what is Latin Life Denver. Well, Latin Life Denver is an independent media corporation. I mean, not a corporation, an uh, independent media outlet. And just to touch a little bit on what Tony talked about. We can no longer depend on corporate media to serve as a voice. And as Latinos, I don't think corporate media has ever really represented us. We've always really had to be our own independent voice, find our independent channels to get our messages out. I go back to the days of El Diario de la Gente in Boulder, at CU in Boulder. Uh, but I also worked for Channel 7 for 30 years before I, too, was shown the door when everything was cut back. We eliminated public affairs programming. That was the first to go. And now, really, all you see on television is just news. You don't see public affairs programming anymore because they really don't care. Like he talked about, it's the bottom line. So with Latin Life Denver, we seek to give a voice to our community. There's so many great things. Yeah, there's the Salsa Bachata Festival that I bet most of you don't even know about, but it takes place every year here in Denver. They're celebrated throughout the world, and you saw a little bit of the dancers that go on there. But 
we just don't do entertainment. We use that as a vehicle to get your attention. Once we have your attention, it's like, hey, here's something else you should, be, you should be paying attention to. What about DACA? What about all these other things that are going on? Our tagline is connecting communities and cultures because we want to really cross over. We don't want to be by Latinos for Latinos. We really want to do, be a forum so, of understanding and communication, that bridge of, of, of understanding one another. And that's really what we seek to do. So yeah, we want to give a voice to a lot of the people and a lot of the things that aren't usually displayed. You know, like I mentioned, there is so much talent in our community, so many people doing so many things. And you guys show that a lot here on Denver Open Media. And I was surprised to hear you guys are under attack. We can't afford to lose you guys. You are a valuable resource to this community. And without you guys, we're going to have a hard time too. You know, but we need to be more of an independent voice. We cannot depend on, like I mentioned, corporate media. I'm sad to see the editor, the editorial editor for the Denver Post. I was so upset by that I canceled my subscription today because I'm like, no, I'm not going to contribute to your corporate bottom line. That's just, it's not right that you're silencing voices that don't agree with your money-making endeavors. And so, yeah, Latin Life Terror, that's what we're about. So you'll see a lot of the stuff that we're bringing. We're launching Latin Life America. We were just in Miami last week, launching latinlifeamerica.com and Latin Life America radio and television, which we'll be doing right here on this stage. And still be a subsidiary of Latin Life Denver, but we are going to be featuring the best of Latino media from throughout the United States and from throughout the world, and being an umbrella organization for all the wonderful things that people are doing. It was so fantastic to be down in Miami for Hispanicize, because I thought, well, well, you know what, Latin Life Denver is a little bit unique. No, there are 3,000 other Latino content creators creating all kinds of media, from radio to television to music and beyond, and we're going to showcase that and let the rest of the world know what's happening with Latino media in the rest, so that we can all gather a better understanding of one another and be able to... To, to, to grow as a society, to understand ourselves as a society and not be divided in these crazy times we're going through. We need to combat that. We just can't accept that. We need to go forward. We need to grow. We can't allow ourselves to be defeated by corporate or by politics. Incredible. Yeah, seriously, seriously. Incredible valuable work you're doing. You mentioned the mission of, of connecting communities, and, and I wonder what, uh, you mentioned a lot of the ways that you're working towards doing that just now, and I'm wondering what, when you're, when you're talking about connecting communities, what exactly do you hope that looks like? And, and, and I know that, uh, that that's a big question, but if you can imagine for a moment your ideal world where these communities, where you've succeeded in your mission, what looks different than today? Well, what it would be is a free marketplace of ideas, where as journalists, and we are journalists first, we're not entertainers, you know, we do cover a lot of that kind of stuff, but we also cover a lot of serious media. But the idea is to contribute to the free marketplace of ideas and let the viewer, let the listener, let the reader make up their mind as to what the truth is and not feed it to them, as it was, is happening in so much media today, as, you, as Tony talked about earlier, how we're being spoon-fed this selective media. And depending on what side of the fence you fall on, you watch that particular genre that reinforces whatever beliefs that you, you, you adhere to. Well, our idea is let's throw out some other ideas. Let's throw out some other truths. And let's, let, let's really provide that free marketplace of ideas where you can decide really what's going on and not be conditioned, programmed, uh, or, or allow yourself to be manipulated by corporate media. I appreciate the work you're doing. I do, um, I do want to know why Latin Denver is here tonight, why what's happening tonight is happening uh, r right before Cinco de Mayo, what Cinco de Mayo means to you, what Cinco de Mayo might mean to an American, uh, a non-Latino. I want to know. I want to know all of these things. Why Cinco de Mayo? What, how do you perceive Cinco de Mayo? Tell me, tell me all about it, and then we're going to throw to a video. Well, you know, Cinco de Mayo is really that conglomeration of collaboration between not just Latinos, but the entire population that makes up our society. And really, when we look at Cinco de Mayo, we look at what happened at Cinco de Mayo, it was dating back to 1862, when a Mexican forced out the French from Mexico. It was the last time that a foreign power invaded North America. And as a result of that, it really did help the United States. You know, several people don't know this, but a lot of Americans fought alongside the Mexicans in re, re, repulsing the French invasion. The French wanted to take over Mexico, but they also wanted to take over the southern U.S. The Civil War was going on at the time. Uh, 
the French wanted to make a big push for Louisiana, for, south, for the south of the United States. American soldiers, knowing that, helped push back the French forces during those times. In fact, uh, uh, several American troops marched in the celebration parade in Mexico City, celebrating the victory of Cinco de Mayo. And so really, we could be living in a much different society right now had it not been for that collaboration between the American and the Mexican soldiers fighting against the French to uh, make sure that, that, that the outcome turned out the way it did. So you know, it's, it's really interesting. So that's really what, what we're about. We're talking about developing a society where we all can work together, struggle together, grow together, and make a better society as a whole. So, you know, as you know, a large part of the United States was, southwestern United States was Mexico. Yeah. You know, so now look at where we are today. You know, we're wanting to build walls. We're wanting to divide each other. Well, you know, we need to stand up to that. We need to fight that. And we need to do it as, as, as a group as, and, 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 and through truth. We know providing real information to people so that they can decide what is right and what is wrong. Uh, again, just so good and so valuable. Thank you. I, I want to throw it to some comic relief here before we get to the comedy. Joe, thank you so much for being here. Latin Life Denver, thank you so much. Let's, let's watch this video. Let's check it out. Not to be a, a buskill, it's just that Americans have some Misconceptions. Does anyone know the real meaning of Cinco de Mayo? Serious <laughs> right now? Yo, it's Mexico's Independence Day. Come on, man. Well, I'm folding right there. That is a mistake. You know, I know Cinco de Mayo might sound like 4th of July, but it's not our Independence Day, like not even close. In Mexico, Cinco de Mayo really is just the 5th of May. But Americans, geez, you, you guys love Cinco de Mayo. You drink tequila. Tequila! You even wear sombreros. Get your hands off my sombrero, baby. And you guys drink more tequila. Look here, tequila. Here's a quick history lesson. <sighs> in 1862, the American Civil War was raging, and it was hurting the French economy, because the North was blocking the South from selling cotton to the other countries, like France. So the Emperor of France, yes, Napoleon III, easily the worst Napoleon, sent his troops to Mexico. The main reason he did it was to collect the debt from the Mexican government, but historians say he also wanted to set up a base to support the South, so that they could end the Civil War and get the cotton flowing again. But those plans were ruined by outnumbered group of Mexicans like myself who rose up and defeated the French invaders who were occupying the small town of Puebla. So when you think about it, Cinco de Mayo is a celebration of the Mexican people doing their part to make sure the good guys won the Civil War. So if you're one of those beautiful Americans who loves to celebrate Cinco de Mayo, you should probably make sure you're celebrating what Mexicans have done for the U.S. too. Because while tequila shots and tacos and enchiladas and tortas are amazing, Mexicans have contributed a whole lot more to the U.S. culture. Like in the 1960s, when Chicano artists used their bold and innovative style to fight for the equal rights of all Mexican Americans. Or on the same time when Sir Chavez was making his own mark on American history by fighting for the rights of farm workers all across the country. And then there's the youth activists of today who are fighting for the rights of undocumented Mexican Americans to build a life in the only country they've ever known and to be treated with respect and dignity. So here's the real deal. Instead of assuming Americans are just using Cinco de Mayo as an excuse to get sloppy drunk and wear Mexican culture as costume, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Go ahead and celebrate the history of Cinco de Mayo. Drink your shots. Eat your tacos, wear your sombreros. Actually, don't, don't wear the sombreros. It's no bueno. It's just a bad look. But make sure that you also recognize Cinco de Mayo as a day that Mexicans stepped up and make a major contribution to the U.S. history. And celebrate the fact that we've been doing just that ever since. U.S. and Mexico, we are hermanos. Viva Mexico! Share this video if you want to celebrate Mexican culture every day.